This is the introduction to linear motions variables. S, U, V, A, and T. S represents the displacement of an object. U represents the initial velocity of an object. V represents the final velocity of an object. A represents the acceleration of an object. And T represents the time taken for the entire motion. These variables are the basis for these four linear motions equations, which are the S is equal to ut plus half a t squared, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, v is equal to u plus a t, and s is equal to t multiplied by u plus v divided by 2. These are the equations that I will be using in the next question. This is the question 14a. A boat with an initial speed of 30 m per second decelerates at 3.5 m per second squared for 4.5 seconds before reaching a buoy. Calculate the speed of the boat at the buoy. Now from this question, we can know that u is equal to 30 m per second as u is the initial speed of the boat. And its deceleration is 3.5 m per second squared. And deceleration basically means the negative acceleration. And acceleration can be replaced by the symbol A. Now the time taken for the entire motion of the boat is 4.5 seconds. So T is equal to 4.5s. And our job or our task for this question is to calculate the speed of the boat at the buoy, which means we have to calculate the final velocity of the boat. There are four equations that we can use to calculate the final speed of the boat. And for this question, V is equal to U plus AT is most suitable as it consists of V, U, A, and T these variables. So by substituting those values inside the equation, we can obtain the value of V is equal to 14.25 meter per second. Before I delve into the next question 14b, I would like you to imagine that you are throwing a ball. Now at this instant, the ball has a velocity of v that is tangent to the motion of the ball. And just like any other vectors, this velocity vector can be resolved into two components which are the vx component and vy component. This ball is always affected by gravitational acceleration g as the ball moves from the origin. Now the ball launches from the origin and it is always affected by the constant value g and this constant value just like we have learned before in home 4 this constant value is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared. And this clearly explains the reason why Vy is always changing as the ball launches from the origin. And it is because of gravitational acceleration. Now let's look at the horizontal component of the ball. The Vx in reality, it is always affected by air resistance that is opposite to the direction of Vx. As the ball launches from the origin, the ball always affected by air resistance in the horizontal component. However, in our syllabus due to its complexity, we ignored the air resistance. This is how the ball looks like when there is no air resistance and in fact in calculation we can imagine the ball moves like this in which the Vx value won't change and only the Vy value will change due to its gravity. 
This is the summary for the calculation of projectile motion for X component. A represents the acceleration or deceleration of the object. Ux represents the initial velocity of the object. Vx represents the final velocity of the object. T represents the time taken for the object to move from initial position to final position. And S represents the displacement from initial to final position of X. The summary for the calculation of projectile motion for Y component. Acceleration or deceleration's magnitude is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared. UY represents the initial velocity of the object. VY represents the final velocity of the object. T represents the time taken for the object to move from initial position to final position. And S represents the displacement from initial to final position of Y. By utilizing the concept that we have learned before, we can now solve question 14b. Figure 8 shows a stream of water hitting a wall at a height of 8 meter with a velocity of 14 meter per second at an angle of 35 degree below the horizontal. And our job is to find the initial velocity of the water. And here's how the figure 8 looks like. To determine its initial velocity u, we first have to determine its x component and y component, which are the ux and uy. Because according to the Pythagorean theorem, we can know that u is equal to the square root of ux squared plus uy squared. To obtain the value of ux, it's quite simple because ux is equal to vx because there is no air resistance. And by using simple trigonometry, we can know that Vx is equal to 32.7661 meter per second. And Vx is equal to Ux, so we just replace it. Now to find the value of Uy, we have to find the vertical components. S represents the height, which is 8 meter. And U represents the Uy. And V represents Vy. And by using simple trigonometry, we can find the value of Vy. And here, I put it as negative because the Vy is pointing downwards. And now acceleration is equal to negative 9.81 meter per second squared. And T, the question doesn't give any value about T. So by using the formula Vy squared is equal to Uy squared plus 2as, and by substituting all the values given, we can know that Uy is equal to 26.1409 meter per second. Now to obtain the value of U, we just substitute everything inside the formula and we can get U is equal to 41.9161 meter per second. And we haven't done yet because we have to find the direction. And tangent theta is equal to mega Uy over Ux and theta is equal to 38.58 degree. Now, here is our answer. We have solved the question 14b.